Hello everyone and welcome to iLand Technologies presentation where we'll be looking at USB applications in Draytech routers. In this webinar I'll go through the different uses of the USB interface which range from WAN connectivity to monitoring and storage solutions. My name is Darren and I'm the Queensland sales rep at Draytech Australia and New Zealand. The topics we'll look at are the types of USB ports you might see, USB WAN connections, and then we'll go through some USB applications and devices that can be connected to Draytech router USB ports. If you have any questions during the video, please comment in the chat box on the right side of the screen and stick around at the end for a five minute Q&A session. Don't forget you can pause the video or skip back any time if you'd like a longer look at anything or to hear it again. If you're watching this after the live premiere, please comment below or send an email to sales at draytech.com.au. We'll start by looking at the types of USB ports used in Draytech routers. Most Draytech routers come fitted with either one or two USB ports, depending on the model type. They are all the USB type A fitting. The color of the block indicates the USB port specification. The one shown here has the white block, which is the USB 2.0 specification, which has a maximum speed of 480 megabits per second. The table lists some of the current router models and the number of USB ports. Most have two USB ports, but others like the 2865 and 2927 LTE routers have one external USB port and one internal USB port, which is connected to the integrated LTE modem. Lower end routers such as the Vega 2620L and Vega LTE 200N don't have a USB port, so these routers don't offer the USB functionality of other routers. Higher end routers include a USB 3.0 port, which has a maximum speed of 5 gigabits per second. These ports are also USB type A fittings. You can spot these by the telltale blue colouring. In the table are some of the router models which include a USB 3.0 port, and you can see there that the Vigor 3910 has two USB 3.0 ports, while the others have one USB 3.0 port and one USB 2.0 port. Now let's look at the USB WAN function. One of the main uses for the USB port in Draytech routers is to provide WAN connectivity through a supported 3G or 4G USB modem. In some routers, this can be either the primary or backup WAN connection. In dual and multi-WAN routers, the USB port can be used for additional WAN connections that can be used as backup WAN connections, or they can be load balanced. Just to note that the USB WAN function is not available in the current firmware release for the Vega 2962 and Vega 3910 routers. A list of supported 3G and 4G USB modems is available in our support webpage at the link shown here, which I'll include in the description below. It's worthwhile checking that list before purchasing a modem to use with a router, otherwise they can't be guaranteed to work. There's also some all-in-one wireless modems floating around out there. Now these aren't supported in Draytech routers when connected to the USB port, but they can be used through the Wi-Fi WAN option in higher-end wireless routers. Besides the support webpage, Draytech routers running the latest firmware now include a list of supported modems as shown here. It shows the modem brand and model, and if LTE capable. The access mode column shows which setting to use in the USB WAN configuration page. The last column shows the status of any testing that's been done, with a Y indicating that the modem has been tested and is supported. Let's have a quick look at the configuration options that are available to set up the USB WAN connection. Here we have the Vega 2865 where WAN 5 and WAN 6 are assigned to each of the two USB ports. Other router models may have different WAN assignments to the USB ports, but the menu configuration options will be the same. To configure the USB WAN, first go into the Internet Access sub-menu under the WAN menu, then for the USB WAN select the mode to use for the connection. This can be either PPP mode or DHCP mode. Most 4G modems now use DHCP mode. We have a number of application notes in our knowledge base as well as videos on our YouTube channel that go into more detail in setting up the USB WAN connection. There's a couple down the bottom there that I'll include in the description below.
Once you select the required mode, you then need to enter the required details, which is usually the APN name that the USB modem will connect to so that the internet connection can be established. Then once the internet connection is established, you should see something like this on the online status page of the router. It'll show the IP address obtained as well as the wireless signal strength. Besides using the USB ports to connect a USB modem, they can also be used for several applications. Let's take a look at those, which you'll find under the USB application menu in the router. Some of the applications we'll cover here are not yet available in the Vigor 2962 and Vigor 3910, but will be added in future firmware updates. So within the USB application menu, we can set up a number of applications. Under general settings, we can set up SMB file sharing and FTP server access to shared files. User management allows us to set up access rules for file access. File Explorer allows the router administrator to view or upload files to the USB storage device. USB device status has monitoring functions, including USB thermometer function to monitor environmental temperature. Let's take a look at each of these in more detail. Starting with the USB general settings menu, on this page you can configure file sharing for connected USB storage devices, such as thumb drives and hard drives, so that they can be accessed by LAN clients. Currently, only FAT16 and FAT32 file systems are supported by Vigor routers, so you'll need to verify that the USB drive contains these file systems. FAT32 is recommended since it supports long file names. You can also specify the number of simultaneous FTP connections. SMB file sharing can also be enabled along with the NetBIOS name service that allows it to appear in the network neighborhood to be accessed by authorized users and configured as a MAP drive if you like as well. Access can be restricted to either LAN only or for both LAN and WAN clients. Print server can also be enabled here as well. For the FTP server, we just need to plug in a USB device that has been formatted to FAT32 into the router USB port, keeping in mind limitations with the FAT32 file system in that only one partition is supported with a maximum size of 500 gigabytes and the maximum file size is 4 gigabytes. Configuration details are covered in Knowledge Base Article 5022, which I'll link below, but I'll briefly go through the basics of how to set it up. After the USB drive is connected, go to the USB device status page to check that the router has detected it, as shown here. The next step is to set up the user accounts, then select the home folder, and then select the access rules for file access, which can be read, write, or delete. Now the user just needs to connect to the router using FTP, entering the username and password you just created in order to access the files on the USB drive. If you'd also like FTP access from the internet, you'll need to enable the FTP server option in the system maintenance management page as shown here. The steps to set up SMB file sharing are similar to that for FTP server access. As I mentioned earlier, SMB file sharing means that the files are visible and accessible on the network, the same as any other shared device. The first step is to plug the USB drive into the router's USB port. The USB drive will also need to be formatted to FAT32. I'll briefly go through what to do from there, but detailed instructions are available in Knowledge Base Article 5152, which I'll link below. After plugging the USB drive into the router USB port, you can check it's been detected in the router menu under USB application, USB device status. If all went well, you should see the connection status shown as disconnected in green text. The next step is to enable the SMB service. Then select the access mode required, which can be either LAN only or LAN and WAN. Then enter the work group and host names. Then, as with FTP server access that we just discussed, set up the user accounts, select the home folder, and the required access rules. One thing to keep in mind here with the username and password is in a standard Windows workgroup, if that username and password doesn't exactly match the credentials that user uses to log into their PC, then the router will prompt for this username and password when they attempt to connect to the USB drive. If they do match, then they won't get that prompt. 
Once the configuration is completed, the hostname that was entered for file sharing should appear in the available networks on each PC. In our example here, we set the hostname as Vigo, so that's what appears in the Windows network shown here. As I mentioned before, if you created an account with a different username and password to the ones the user uses to log into their PC, they won't get a prompt to access the shared files. Otherwise, they'll get this prompt when they try to get access. Also, the network administrator can monitor who is connected to the SMB service by going to the USB application, USB device status menu page and look at the disk tab. Going back to USB user management where we create our user profiles for access for FTP and SMB file shares on an attached USB drive on the router. Up to 16 user profiles can be created, but this varies depending on router model. Here also the access rules can come in very handy if you have files you don't want certain people to be able to delete or alter in any way. The File Explorer option in the menu allows network administrators to view files on the attached USB drive. It is possible to create new folders on the USB drive. You can also delete or rename files and folders as well as upload or download files to and from the USB drive to your PC. This is useful as well when capturing the router syslog to the USB drive and you need to download the logs to your PC for analysis. To save syslogs to the USB drive, you'll need to go to the System Maintenance, Syslog, Mail Alert, Setup menu in the router and enable it as shown here. Then you'll be able to use the File Explorer function to view the syslog or download it to your PC. More details are available in Application Note 5746 in the Draytech Knowledge Base. The USB device status page in the router allows you to monitor the status of other attached USB devices. We've looked at disk so far, but there's also tabs for modem, printer and sensor. On the disk tab, there's also a disconnect USB disk button. It's highly recommended to always click that prior to unplugging the drive in order to maintain the data integrity on it. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes just pulling a USB drive out without first clicking that option on a router or a PC, whichever it's connected to, that can cause some or all of the files to be lost or corrupted. USB drives do give up the ghost from time to time anyway, so I'd highly recommend having a backup system in place so that all important files are copied to at least one other place on a regular basis. The disk status also shows the capacity of the attached USB drive as well as the remaining capacity. We covered the USB WAN connection earlier. Here in the modem status page, we can see the connection status as well as some hardware details of the USB modem. The printer status page displays the status of any attached USB printers. Most basic LPR, ink and laser printers will work fine, but some multifunction printers can be a bit hit and miss. If they do work, you may still not have network access to other functions like the scanner and more advanced printing functions like bi-directional printing and the printer monitor application probably won't work. Detailed instructions on how to set up LPR printing on a Windows computer is covered in application note 5656 in the Draytech knowledge base. That'll be in the description below as well. The sensor tab. A USB thermometer is now available which can be used with Draytech routers. These help monitor the server or data communications room environment and notify you if things start getting a bit hot. This is particularly important during summer to ensure that your server or data communications equipment aren't overheating due to cooling system failures. The sensor tab displays the status of an attached USB thermometer such as the one shown here. That's the Draytech DT201U, I'll include a link to that below. The temperature sensor is configured and monitor in the temperature sensor submenu in the router. A detailed application note is available, number 4713, which goes through the steps to configure the router. Once configured, you'll be able to view the environmental temperature chart over the previous 24 hour period and get alerts if the room temperature exceeds the preset thresholds. Those preset thresholds are set on the next tab in the same location in the router. In our example here, we have the upper limit set to 30 degrees Celsius and the lower limit set to 18 degrees. If the temperature then falls outside of those, you can be alerted via email or SMS and the alarms can also be saved to a syslog. To be alerted when an alarm condition is met, you'll need to first create a notification object, which we've called temperature in our example. 
That's done in object setting notification object. Then select a new profile and tick the USB out of range option. Then within application SMS mail alert service, select that profile from the notify profile pull down menu and then include the email address or phone number that the alarm will be sent to. Okay, more information on USB applications in Draytech routers is available in the application notes shown here from our knowledge base. As always, I'll list those in the description below. So to summarize today, we started by looking at the types of USB ports used in Draytech routers. We looked at one application of the USB port where it can be configured as a WAN interface for internet connections. Then we looked at the USB applications menu in the router, which covered general settings for FTP and Samba access. Other options within USB applications included user management, file explorer, USB device status, and finally the temperature sensor. Okay, that's it for me, but please stay tuned. Our technical team will be answering questions in the live chat on the right of your screen for the next five minutes. For more information about Draytech products, please check out our website at www.draytech.com.au or send us an email to sales at draytech.com.au or give us a call on 02-9838-8899. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. And if you'd like a notification anytime we put up a new video, please give the bell a click too. Thanks and bye for now.